You're watching CNA Heroes. Here's Lisa Sweet. Welcome to CNA Heroes. I'm Lisa Sweet, co-founder of the National Association of Healthcare Assistants. Thank you so much for viewing these segments, honoring those who have dedicated themselves to caring for the frail and elderly. Seems really hard to believe that it is August and we're still battling COVID-19, especially in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. CNAs continue to fight this deadly virus and its hold on the residents. One would think it would get easier over the months. It hasn't. CNAs working in nursing homes are still reporting that there is not enough personal protective equipment or PPE. And what they have to do is often use single, single use disposable items that they are then forced to reuse time and time again. And of course, CNAs report they do not have enough coworkers, other CNAs to help them provide the level of care the residents truly deserve. Yet they keep working and they keep caring. Meet 69-year-old Lawrence Noakes, affectionately known as Junior to his friends and family. He's from Westminster, Maryland, and he worked as a nursing assistant in a nursing home in Mount Airy, Maryland. He had been attending to patients just days before 84 of the facility's 95 residents tested positive for the novel coronavirus, making it one of the worst outbreaks of the virus in the state. Junior was admitted to the hospital's intensive care unit March 30th and placed immediately on a ventilator due to his difficulty breathing from the coronavirus and its devastating destruction of the lungs. He had to leave his wife of 24 years at home, Manette Noakes, 71 years old. She had to stay home under quarantine with Junior's COVID diagnosis. Manette was the light of Junior's life. She was a vivacious, feisty woman who greeted Junior after work each day at their quiet home in Westminster, often resting a grandchild or great-grandchild on her hip. The same woman who on Sunday nights slow danced with Junior to Patti LaBelle. Now she was quarantined alone at home, not able to visit her critically ill husband or even have her family around for support. In the days after sending her husband to the emergency room, Manette had started feeling extremely tired, her daughters said. She worried about her husband, whom she often called Junebug. After just over a week in a coma and on a ventilator, Junior's prognosis improved. He started breathing on his own. Doctors told the family that they thought he would survive. As he regained consciousness, there was just one person he wanted to see. That was Manette. He kept asking for her and he started growing agitated. He wanted to see her talk to his beloved wife. On April 7th, a day before her 72nd birthday, Manette Noakes had a heart attack and died in her sleep at home. The medical examiner's office said she posthumously tested positive for the coronavirus. Upon hearing the news of his wife's death, Junior's respirations grew raspy. He requested and signed a do not resuscitate order, stopped all medical treatment, and requested a transfer to hospice. Over the next five days, Junior called his children and grandchildren, giving them instructions on what to do with his belongings and telling him that he loved them. He apologized many times to his stepdaughter because despite what loved ones told him, 
he felt responsible for his wife getting sick. He died on April 15th, eight days after Manette. Family says he died of a broken heart. Lawrence Jr. Noakes, you were a great man, husband, father, brother, grandfather, great-grandfather, and CNA. You gave it all to those you cared for. Thank you for your service. Everyone, please join me because today we honor Lawrence Jr. Noakes, CNA hero.